sometimes it's interesting, actually oftentimes it is interesting, to make a perspective. Most people will tell me about what lens that they think is best, and then I'll go, compared to what? <laughs> All right, actually, my favorite words to use when uh, someone is uh, trying to uh, discuss something with me, I say, that's good, that's bad, and I go, compared to what? <laughs> What's what's the baseline of comparison? What exactly? And ultimately, there's not that many cameras out there when it comes to hardcore pro. DSLR slash mirrorless, we group them all the same there. They're both just tools meant to be used for an end purpose, whether that is uh, advanced amateur photography, um, enthusiast or professional portraiture, landscape, architectural product photography, portraiture. I, do, uh, I, I love doing these, and people seem to like them talking about a tale of two lenses. I've always been, uh, over the years, uh, comparing a couple lenses, usually of the same focal length. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of my favorite cameras. Now, I don't have the D3 out here, which I've, I'm ashamed to admit that I have three Nikon D3s, which is a 12 megapixel camera. It's a really big, beefy, basically looks like the Nikon D4. It still averages, even though that camera came out in 2008, still averages about $1,000. It's Nikon D4. came out in 2012, so we're talking six years ago. Still averages, average, about $2,200, at least in the United States. Used, decent, actually that's with a lot of clicks on it. A lot. Now here we have the uh, Fujifilm X-T2, literally my favorite all-around camera, and I use those words specifically, all-around camera of all time. Now there's only one thing the D4 would best the Fujifilm X-T2 on and that is field of view for wide-angle lenses and obviously for compression and uh, and uh, uh, framing of uh, a portrait lens, say an 85 millimeter. It's a lot easier. I mean with a 50 with a, uh, a crop sensor camera you need a 56 millimeter at f1.4 to get the same out-of-focus uh, background uh, um, rendering as you would with like an 85 uh, millimeter f1.8 so it is certainly superior well even then actually the X-T2 will best it at 24 megapixels I mean obviously so it is the case that uh, even though Fujifilm has the 10 to 24 and the 8 to 16 millimeter they're coming out with the Fujifilm will actually you know run right shot next to the uh, Nikon D4S um, for a landscape um, High ISO performance. Well, high ISO performance is certainly not the uh, the strongest point on the Fujifilm X-T2 relative to, say, for example, a Nikon D500, which will actually take images of things I can't even see at uh, 12,000 or 40,000 ISO and still be decent. Um, it certainly will absolutely best the uh, long in the tooth old Nikon D4 here at high ISO at say 6400 or 12800 ISO by the way is not part of exposure it's actually applied gain to uh, the image off of the sensor as it's being processed so ISO is not part of exposure of course if you don't believe this you need to look up the words ISO invariance so the only thing really even though this is still a $2200 camera all day long halfway decent shape that uh, it will best the Fuji on, and even then, not really, is um, like saying uh, throwing a, a 300 millimeter 28 on it or a 200 to 500 Nikkor and ripping off a long string of uh, of shots before uh, maxing out the buffer at uh, well lossless compressed 14 bit at uh, what 76 shots. Uh, so that's one thing, and of course that's exactly what it was designed for. I mean, 2012 was not that long ago. I had comments from certain people that have said, well, and this of course gets back to my original statement, compared to what? When people will say, well, an XT2, and if it's outside of someone's budget, that's perfectly understandable. Um, basically, you get nearly everything in an XT20 for $800. Anybody will make the statement that the Fujifilm XT2 is uh, expensive. I go, compared to what? Um, it's everything and more so than the Nikon D4. I mean, I love both of these cameras. I really have no reason. Other than like my Nikon D3, I should keep one Nikon D3 for really, really bad weather situations as a beater camera, but I have no reason to hold on to the Nikon D4, except for nostalgia. I was always a hardcore Nikon fan, and still am, even though since day one I've always despised uh, the customer service, not the customer service on broken items, but 
the uh, the customer interaction that Nikon has with its uh, customers. It is very stuck up and a snooty. Uh, just a really rather a horrible company um, to its customers. Not for like I said repairs and whatnot, but customer relations, not customer repairs. So you know they they see they have a serious uh, stuck up attitude adjustment uh, problem at Nikon. But that's neither here nor there. This is about you know, a tale of two cameras. I have so much more fun with the Fujifilm X-T2 than any other camera that I've had. I'm talking about adapted lenses, focus peaking, absolutely brilliant. Um, I have, and this is undeniable because of course my videos are still up on it, stated specifically that the notion that uh, mirrorless is smaller is absolute BS. I never got interested in Fuji because, uh, well, mirrorless is the next thing. Well, large lenses are large lenses. You throw a 100 to 400 millimeter Fujifilm lens on this camera, for example, and it becomes a huge, heavy beast. Obviously, the camera body is smaller, but you notice that no one says that mirrorless is smaller anymore. Well, there's a few people that say mirrorless is smaller, but of course... All of that hype has died down. People have started to realize that big optics are big optics. I never bought in a Fujifilm based upon any form of mirrorless hype because mirrorless hype is exactly that. It's hype. Um, battery uh, usage has gotten so much better. The major complaint because uh, to feed the viewfinder of a mirrorless camera, you need to suck power to feed the uh, tiny TV screen essentially inside the viewfinder which you do not have on a DSLR however mirrorless has come to the point where that's not a concern for anybody anymore not really it isn't anyway Sony's improved on that Fujifilm has improved on that I bought into Fujifilm and I've gone in lock stock and barrel and have absolutely no regrets because it is currently the number one best camera manufacturer I say this freely of my own will no one is paying me to say this at all as someone that fixes cameras and own more cameras and lenses than God, I don't take that as an egotistical statement. Fujifilm is making the best cameras today, currently. The X-T2 is my favorite camera of all time. I hold no delusions about you know thinking I'm going to throw a 300mm 2.8 on this lens and uh, go out and shoot uh, at the Olympics with the Fujifilm X-T2. Fuji knows they do not have that sort of exotic, big, fat uh, glass. Uh, for their system. They do not at this point in time. The 200mm f2 is coming out, obviously so, which is equivalent to a 300mm 2.8. That's all wonderful. There's no perfect camera that's perfect for everything. It just doesn't exist. Uh, but as far as focus peaking, adapted lenses, I mean, I absolutely love the hell out of this camera. I'm a person that hates everything, pretty much. I got something critical to say about everything. I got Nikon and tattooed Nikon, excuse me, Nikon and Fujifilm tattooed in my hand because these have been the two most uh, joyful experiences of my life. I grew up with Nikon. Grew up with Nikon. I went to photography school with Nikons, a pair of Nikon uh, D4, uh, Nikon D4s, um, uh, 8008, 6006s, those are Nikon film cameras, a pair of 6.7 Pentaxes, Calumet 4x5. Um, as a tale of two cameras, I mean, between these two, for $600 less, the Fujifilm is so much more than even this huge, obnoxious Nikon D4. Both of these are magnesium chassis cameras. Both of them have the exact same level of weather sealing on them. Not that that's important at all. No camera is really weather sealed. There's a short-term invasive versus long-term pervasive. Um, uh, weather uh, considerations as far as long-term uh, onset of corrosion, specifically on the motherboard due to magnesium sloughing off the interior surfaces. Both of those are identical issues between either one of these cameras. Both of them are magnesium chassis cameras. Both of these are made in Japan. This camera is long in the tooth, and I know it is still looked upon because it's a huge, obnoxious beast of a camera. Oh, there's the Pro Tool. There's the Pro Tool, that big Nikon D4, right? Well... I said six years is not that long ago. When this camera came out, it was six thousand dollars. The XT2 came out, it was one thousand six hundred dollars. I mean, this is still the best value professional camera out there. Like I said, I hold no delusions about it doing incredible uh, low light photography for like really, really dark clubbing events. The Fujifilm would not be my first choice. 
I'm assuming, and Fujifilm, of course, knows this is a shortcoming, that, that they will have that issue. It's not an issue. They will have that fully resolved in the next iteration after the X-T2. But uh, as overall camera, it comes the closest to perfection of any other camera that I've owned. And I've owned every Nikon digital camera that's ever been made. Many of them are poopers, like the 1 and the 2DX. Oof. Nikon D750 and its countless recalls. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you were to go out and buy both of these cameras today, of course you can't buy a new Nikon D4. Well, there's a few Nikon D4s new out there, with which you'll pay $6,000. Imagine that, this camera at $1,600 versus a new Nikon D4, or it would probably be a Nikon D4S new that you could find for, of course when that came out it was $6,600. Um, so much radically a better camera, so much more fun to use, no less a professional tool than the uh, Nikon D4 or D5 is. I would much rather have this for usage than the Nikon D5, a horrible abysmal camera for $6,500, 20 megapixels with has a damn anti-aliasing filter over top of it, which is really stupid. Really dumb. Nikon shouldn't have done that. Um, much better tool the X-T2 is. But, um, both of these are precision instruments with a magnesium chassis made in Japan. $1,600 versus $600 more for this camera with, say, like 100,000 clicks on it for $2,200. At $2,200 at $2,200 with nearly 100,000 plus clicks on it if you're to find one comparably. Um, and people are always trying to make comparisons like, well, you know, what's your budget and what do you shoot? Um, even for landscape and even for uh, portraiture, well, not necessarily for portraiture because full frame obviously wins out, but and for landscape, the uh, the, uh, the Fuji uh, X-T2 would uh, be a superior choice than even the Nikon D4 is. And even though the uh, Fujifilm X-T2 is not an excellent uh, an excellent pupil at uh, high ISO low light performance for you know, uh, evening shooting or a gritty uh, club. Certainly, the autofocus is much faster and superior than the Nikon D4. Even at, even at its uh, slight limitations and super high ISO performance on the X-T2, is still far better than the uh, uh, than the Nikon uh, D4 is. The Nikon D4 has huge photo sites on it too, by the way, which of course tells you that uh, most everything is not sensor side; it's actually uh, image processing side. SNR uh, SNR firmware. 7.3 micrometer, pi micrometer pixel pitch on the uh, Nikon D4 and Nikon D4S, much smaller on the Fujifilm X-T2. People think the sensor is everything, and my god, that's not the case at all. Mm, absolutely not. Um, so anyway, I just want to make that comparison. I want to start comparison. I get a lot of impression from people that think that, oh, the X-T2, that's just kind of like an advanced hobbyist camera. It's like, no, it sure as hell is not. You know, I've got a Nikon D850. I got a Nikon uh, D500. I got the Nikon D4. Got Nikon D3s. Tested the Nikon D5, a horrible camera. If ever there was one for $6,500. What was Nikon thinking? Smoking crack, apparently. Horrible camera. For a lot of money. Too much money. Um, Fujifilm is making the best cameras today. They got their uh, eyes on uh, the end of the trail, and they're doing everything right that uh, Canon and Nikon really are not. And I know Nikon's going to come out with a mirrorless camera, but I hear it's going to be the Z mounts. And of course, other than using an adapter, none of the current lenses will work, A, without an adapter, or two, without being modified by Nikon at the factory at point source. And this, of course, is wonderful for Nikon, because it gives them the opportunity to resell all of their current lenses except with a different uh, flange distance uh, mount and design so they could take all their existing designs slightly modify them and sell them as their new mirrorless lenses that's a huge cash cow for Nikon that a lot of people are not interested in that will have current Nikon lenses <laughs> they'll just take those Nikon lenses and uh, buy an adapter for it and stick it on the Fujifilm <laughs> thanks so much for watching this was a tale of two cameras. I think it's a good uh, comparison. Because these are two uh, odd, oddly matched cameras that are kind of radically apart from each other. 
said it every instance but one the Fujifilm X-T2 excels over the Nikon D4 here thank you if you like these videos you always click the link below tell me to jump off a cliff whatever makes you happy goodbye Fuji <laughs>